Welcome to our devotional study today. We are going to go to Revelation chapter 12 in our Bibles, and we're going to look at verses 12 down through to the end of the chapter. And I strongly encourage you, if you've not uh, heard the previous devotionals on Revelation chapter 12, that you go listen to those so that what we look at here will make sense to you. Um, we've been looking at this dragon, and uh, notice what it says about him in Revelation 12, beginning in verse 12. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with a woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we have seen how in the earlier part of this chapter, um, how the woman is a is Israel, the man child is the Lord Jesus Christ, the dragon is a devil. As we come into these verses, we see that Satan does not take being cast out of heaven very well. And uh, he now turns his wrath to the only place that he can operate, and that is earth. And notice the fury of the dragon's attack in verse 12, where it tells us there, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. This pronounces a divine woe upon the inhabitants of the earth because they are about to feel the unfil unfiltered fury of an angry devil. He knows that he only has a very limited time, as this verse tells us, before the eternal plan of the Lord is finished. He knows that he is facing certain judgment. And since he cannot vent his anger toward heaven and God any longer, he turns his hatred earthward and attacks the people living on the earth. And as we look at verses 13 through 17, we see the focus of the dragon's attack. And we see there that the primary object of Satan's attack and Satan's wrath becomes the chosen people of God, the nation of Israel. We've already saw in verses 1 through 6 that Satan hates Israel and that he does everything in his power to destroy that nation. And in these verses, verses 13 through 17, we are giving a few more details of that terrible time. We are told here that Satan persecuted the woman. And the word persecute here means to chase or to pursue. It refers to a hostile pursuit. Satan goes after Israel with a vengeance. And he pursues them with violent destruction on his mind. But we are also told that Israel is divinely protected. The image of eagle wings here is symbolic of God's personal protection of his chosen people. Come back for just a moment to Exodus chapter 19. As we come back to Exodus chapter 19, we find this in verse 4. It says, Ye have seen... What I did unto the, the Egyptians, how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Of course, talking about that protection that God gave to the nation of Israel. God brings Israel into a place of safety that he has prepared for them. And there, he will feed them and he will care for them for three and one half years. Notice what it says back in Revelation chapter 12. And uh, in verse 14, it says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is prepared for a time and times and half a time from the face of the earth. That idea of time and times and half a time, you look at Daniel 7, verse 25, and when you cross-reference that, you find that, it, that that phrase, time and times and half a time, refers to three and a half years that God is going to protect them. Satan will be prevented from totally destroying the nation of Israel. 
And then in Romans 12 and verse 15, we see that it depicts the attacks of Satan being like a great flood of water. That he will pull out all the stops, as it were, and try everything at his disposal to destroy Israel. But even the earth gets involved, and we're told in verse 16 that the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood. Now, we don't know exactly what that means. It may mean that there are some friendly nations of the earth, Gentile people, who will reach out to Israel and take them in and give them uh, give to their need during those dark days. Or it may mean that the earth will absorb the blows that Satan intended for Israel. We're not exactly sure what it means other than that God is going to protect the nation of Israel and that he is going to provide for them. God has a plan for Israel, and Satan will not thwart that plan, no matter how hard he tries. God is sovereign, and he will do as he has said that he will do concerning all things, especially regarding the nation of Israel. And then in verse 17, it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This verse teaches us that there will be a faithful remnant of Israel during these dark days of the tribulation period. There will be a multitude of Jews saved through the preaching of the 144,000 Jewish evangelists and the two witnesses who will preach in Jerusalem. And these redeemed Jews will embrace the Messiah and they will come back to the word of God. They will be persecuted for their faith, but a remnant will be saved. We don't have time to go there, but I encourage you to jot down Matthew 24, verses 1 through 22, where you can read about this. God will have the final say, and he says that Satan loses and that God's people win. Hallelujah. Friends, as we've looked at these verses in Revelation so far, we have seen and we have studied and I have taught some horrible things. But as we move through this book of Revelation, we see that every now and then we are allowed to find a cause for rejoicing, even in this dark book. In this passage here, we learn that the devil, that he, that evil being who has fought against God's people, we learn that his plan and that and his people for thousands of years will be defeated. We learn that the one who has accused us when we fail and has condemned us by name in heaven will one day be cast out of that city. We also are going to learn later that his path will end in the flame of the lake of fire. Friends, those words uh, that tell us about what's going to happen to the devil and the fact that the devil gets what's coming to him uh, is certainly encouraging to us. It is a good word, and it reminds us that he may torment us now. He may tempt us now, but his day is coming, and he knows that his day is coming. So, friend, we need to be encouraged. We need to understand that in the end, if we stay faithful to God, and we do what he is that he has called us to do, that we are victorious, that we are conquerors, that if we are faithful to him now as we serve him, and we don't seek to serve him in our own power, but that we do it, through the energy and the power and the enabling of the Holy Spirit of God, that we will be rewarded for our faithful service to him in the millennial kingdom and in heaven. Maybe there's some of you that are listening to these devotionals that have never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And as you see what is unfolding and what is going to unfolding in our world uh, after the return of the Lord Jesus Christ for the rapture of the saints, it, it scares you to look at what this world is facing. Friends, this could be your day. I encourage you to come to Jesus and to uh, acknowledge your sinful condition before him. Believe that Jesus Christ loves you, that he's the only one who can save you and reach out to him. Call upon his name for salvation. And friends, he will forgive you. He will save you. And uh, maybe you're just listening to this and you'd like to take some time to thank God for saving your soul. You'd like to ask God to increase the burden that you have for the people that are around you that are not saved. Friends, this is a great time to take some time right now and come before the Lord and with whatever your needs are and uh, and trust him to meet the deepest needs of your heart and to minister to your life and to help you to be where you need to be 
by his grace. Have a great day.